Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This week we thought we'd do a uh, bit of a rundown on the um, Land Cruiser. So it's a 2020 model dual cab Land Cruiser, um, obviously 79 series. Um, now we went for the GXL model, so it comes factory with front and rear lockers, uh, carpets inside, electric windows. So it's not, you know, the POV pack, it's sort of the top of the range model for the um, 79 series cruisers. Now, we're gonna be running through what we've done, how we've set it up, why we've set it up this way, and basically, we'll walk through some of the costs on, you know, what it costs to set up a vehicle like this um, for your, you know, for your touring needs. You don't have to spend, you know, massive amounts of money. Now, compared to what some of the other people are spending on cruisers, I think we've done pretty well with, you know how much we've spent and what we've got it's really comes down to personal preference for us and what we like what we feel is going to be better um, you know on the road you know for what we do so four wheel driving touring towing the van all that sort of stuff is going to be um, yeah we've set it up to do that in more of a budget way than you know spending big dollars on everything so let's go and have a bit of a look around all right, so we'll start up the front. Now, um, we've got the ARB bull bar, um, attached to the scrub bars, and then obviously the side steps. Now, all this was fitted at ARB prior to us picking the car up. Now, all this other stuff, so we've got the 8.5 inch Supernova LED spotlights, which we they were an after, so we picked them up. Now, a lot of the car we've actually picked up, and I've looked around for specials. So whether it be Autobahn, Repco, um, even Supernova, have a look around. Um, there's a couple of Instagram profiles. I think um, 79 Boss, they have a, a discount code. So we managed to get 10% off the spotties um, when we brought them. So it's all about trying to save money where you can, and then you can spend up on other things. So like, these spotties, I think they cost us with the 10% discount was about $530. So not too bad. They've got the daytime running lights on either side. And you know, they, they look really, really good, nice and tough, and they're really bright as well. So they throw a real long distance and also spread like a light bar. So been really happy with them. Now we've got the GME aerial, so it's the 1.2 meter um, aerial uh, with the fold down bracket all from GME now we picked the bracket up from just on eBay I think it was about 130 bucks delivered so that was pretty good and the aerial I think that was hang up just let me check I got a little price list here so I can uh, run through it all a bit more accurate so the CB aerial was about $224 from Repco now they had a bit of a special on and I just waited and we brought this and as we'll see inside later the actual CB itself so they were all I think probably 20% off or something like that so it worked out really well now as we move around to the side we've got the OCAM mirrors so the towing mirrors now these things here come out with um, just your old like I had a 90, 96 model GQ patrol before you know a couple of years ago it came out with the same mirrors as that so if you think you're buying a cruiser and it's going to be comfortable and you know all upmarket you're wrong you got to spend money on them to make them you know comfortable in the way you want them but they are probably one of the most um what would you say they've got the most accessories available i would say on the market so you can purchase basically anything and build up the car the way you want it so these things here were let's see they're in here somewhere uh, about 580 bucks so and now the only thing is you do have to drill a hole through the door um which new car that's pretty daunting <laughs> you measure about five times and you know drill once hopefully um but 
they're excellent so now we can adjust the mirrors from inside now they're not the power fold ones so you have to push them in manually but they've been excellent even without towing they're they're perfect like you know you can fold them in when you're on the tight tracks and everything works really really well so really happy with that also from ocam we've got the weather shield so they've been excellent they just look really nice in the black as well um which oh I, I like them and they cut out a bit of the snorkel noise so as we'll go when we go over the other side you'll see you know the bigger snorkels they really you can really hear them so having that the weather shields do does cut out some of the sound now when you install these it's one of these things that i see a lot of people going over the top of the gxl sticker now you don't have to do that they're only a double-sided tape so what i did was use a bit of braid fishing line cut in behind so I just wiggled it through to take the gxl sticker off before i fitted the mirrors fitted the mirrors and then figured out where was going to be the best place to put them so i think they just look so much nicer and um it just makes it look like it's done properly so you know it's finished nicely now obviously you've got the arb side steps so that was all done from the dealer now all the arb bull bar scrub bars and side steps that was all about four and a half grand for the whole lot and that's in a satin black finish so we went with the satin black for the bull bar tray and all of that stuff because we've had the color coded bull bars before and now when you're doing driving like we do out west you get a lot of stone chips bugs all that sort of stuff and we noticed that the color code was just the two-pack paint is not as strong as the powder coating so the color coded bull bar that we had on our old prado we noticed big stone chips in the paint the bugs were really hard to sort of you know clean off and it was harder to keep the bull bar clean so we found the black is just a lot better if you scuff it or scratch it you know a bit of black paint you can touch it up so it's nice and easy and i think going the red and the black sort of keeps that theme right through and looks you know quite good now we'll go move to the back of the tray so we've got a tong metal at uh, north gate so they were the ones that did the tray now this is full full aluminium tray so had it all made up there's a water tank in the headboard here so i think there's a tap on the other side down the bottom and the tank up the front here which is close to 40 liters and another tank in the headboard here so it's really quite handy so if something happens to one of them you still got some sort of backup water in here now they said there's about 10 liters in here i really think there's a bit more um i have to check it out but I'm pretty certain there's a bit more than 10 litres because you've got all of this right around here and I think it's 75 by 50 completely from one side to the other. So the only thing I do have to do is put another tap under here to access the water on this side. So at the moment we've only got access to the top and the other side for water. Um, but that, you know, we go away for a weekend, that's a perfect amount of water. We, you know, wash your hands, wash dishes, do whatever when you're just, you know, roughing it in the swag super handy having it here tucked out of the way now they run through and they put all the toolboxes up underneath which finishes off really nicely now um, these are all keyed alike so it's perfect you know one key opens both sides now we find they sort of hang they they're up just high enough where we only just hit them every now and then like on really tough stuff we've only just scraped one of them so not not really bad at all they sort of tuck up out of the way the only thing we will do is just cut this mud flap up a little bit higher because that's the first thing that hits everywhere so we've still got to do that um now it's obviously got the tray sides for it we've taken them off at the moment we've just got one of the old dog crates on the back um, it's just easier to throw stuff in for now until we look at a canopy setup but that's a little bit later on down the track we're happy for now um, we didn't go for a canopy because a we wanted to keep the weight down on the cruiser just the whole GVM um, side of things now I think this tray from memory weighs about 150 kilos and that's all up including the drawer underneath the water tank up front obviously empty but yeah it's, it's very lightweight for what it is and it's strong like they've built it really really well really happy with it 
Now, obviously, canopy wise, we're happy when we pull up with the van, everything's in the van. If we want to go away, you know, and leave the van somewhere, we're happy to throw the swag on the back, you know, throw the fridge on and away we go. We don't need much. That's the whole point of, you know, camping is just going back to basics and being nice and simple. So that's what we love and it keeps the weight down on the cruiser as well. So it's a win-win um, for all of that. We might look at maybe a half canopy later on, but for now, we're just gonna leave it and run it as just the tray. Now, as we go around the back, Tong, they've done a great job. They got all the nice lights, all LED. Um, now, the drawer in here, we opted for the full length drawer. Now, just excuse it, it is a mess, but it's a 1500 drawer. So, it pulls out a long way and you can put a lot of stuff in it. So, it's really, really handy to have, you know, all your tools, a few spare parts, all of that stuff. And it's sealed really well. Like, we've washed it, like, washed it, dirt roads, everything, not a bit of dust or anything has gotten in there. So, super happy with that. Now, while we're here, we'll go through, obviously we've got the hitch for the DO35 on the back. Now, that's just your cover on it. Um, we've got your red Anderson plug, which that was wired up from, uh, actually that was included when we brought the caravan. So they wired that one in. Um, and then we've got our 12 volt Anderson plug and obviously our trailer plug. Now we did add, as you can see up here, we added in the reverse camera. So it's perfect, as you can see, it's perfect in line with the tow ball. So we can reverse up and I can hook up the van in about five minutes, like by myself, nice and easy. So it definitely pays, because obviously in these things, the reverse camera is not a standard feature, which being a new ute in 2020, you'd think they'd have some sort of feature, you know, with the reverse camera, but I don't even think the new models have that. So it's definitely an extra that we wanted and installed obviously aftermarket head unit, which we'll go in and have a look at later. But it's been worth every cent that camera. So I definitely you know, recommend doing that. Now, over this side, same thing. They've just cut the, they repositioned the fuel filler and obviously the toolbox is cut around that. So it's really a nice, nice fit. And they've also got a spare tire mount up the front. So it just keeps things nice and simple. And you know, you can lock that on there and that way it's nice and secure. So it's really good. And that keeps the weight right up the front instead of having it, you know, hanging off the back where on these things, you don't really want the weight back. You want to try and keep it as forward as you can. So that's a good thing with this tray. Now I think they've got all stainless steel fittings. So they're all, you know, really, really nice. They look good and they're great you know if there's in yeah if you're going to see the beach and all that sort of stuff and things are getting a bit salty nothing rusts out and everything stays looking really good now the tray itself um that costs us about i think it was nine thousand three hundred so that's basically powder coated with the under tray toolboxes the spare tire holder water tanks drawer and everything fitted nine three and Basically, I, I, I can't complain, it's been excellent, um, especially to have it all in alloy. So I know there's a couple of other companies out there, they charge like quite a bit more. So that's why we went with this and I, I, I'd do it again tomorrow if I had to. So definitely got no complaints about that. Now the suspension under the back of this, so we've gone for a full um, Dobinson lift kit so it's their MRR adjustables um, so we've got the adjustable shocks in here in the remote reservoir and also um, the 500 kilo constant leafs in the back so we went the 500s because obviously we're towing the van um, you know from time to time on weekends and that and we want it to be able to carry the weight obviously the tow ball weight and all that sort of stuff but if we're not towing the van we want it to be able to use for work and that so we can load it up with you know logs do whatever and we found it's really good now we've just had a play around on the weekend at land cruiser park with the shocks so the adjustable shocks now they've been excellent you can really tell the difference when you loosen them right off it actually you can feel it rock and you know it just absorbs the bumps so much better and for a you know leaf rear they're 
you know, a very rigid truck as it is, it rides surprisingly well. So even on the road, it's a little bit bumpy, but you know, it, it does the job. So it, it's really quite a good kit. Now I think the whole kit, suspension and all, so we haven't done anything with the wheel track. As you know, 79's come out with a different wheel track front and rear. So I think there's about 90 mil difference from the front to the back. So the only way you can get around it is if you um, replace basically the rear housing for the diff. And there's a few companies out there doing it now. We haven't done that. We've basically just gone on the suspension. So we really didn't see the need in um, upgrading, you know, you can do the coil conversions like with the GVM upgrade. Like, I understand that if you're going around, you know, towing a van around Australia all the time, you're going to have a big canopy set up. I think it's definitely worth it. But personally, the only thing I would look at with this is probably obviously widen the wheel track and maybe a 300mm chassis extension because I've heard just doing that, obviously, you're pulling your wheels back here so they're under the middle of the tray and it just carries the weight a lot better now I think a chassis extension is about seven and a half grand um, which if you're looking at you know twenty five thirty thousand dollar coil conversion I'd rather stick with leafs and just extend the chassis to carry that extra weight so yeah that's about all I'd change probably in the the back end of the cruiser is probably I'd say eventually we might look at doing a chassis extension. Amber reckons they look a bit funny, but um, you know, just to carry that bit of extra weight, and you know, it sort of strengthens the chassis up a bit. That's a wrap on the whole back end, basically. Yeah, like for Leafs, it goes really well. So we're really happy with that. Now the whole car, when we um, when we brought it, so it was basically brand new. Didn't even have the tray on yet. We took it in and. Um, Express tinting at, I think it's Virginia. They went through and we've got the new ceramic tinting. Um, so basically it just stops where it, your old tint, it used to stop the sun, but if you stand there in the heat, you'll actually feel the heat come through the window. So this basically cuts out a lot more of that. So in the car, you can have the sun blaring down in your window and just cuts out that piercing, you know, heat that comes through. So we're really happy with that. So we've got it on all the windows, all the ceramic tint, and they also ceramic coated the car. Now, I think I'd say a package like that's probably around, you know, the 12 to $1,500, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he looked after us with price because we've done all our cars there. So he sort of gave us, you know, a good price on that. But I think it's around the $1,200 um, for the for the tinting and the ceramic coating um, but yeah it's it's been great like every time we wash this it it looks like it's just been polished now we can go away we went a week up in Cairns now we had salt spray we had everything on the car it looked filthy basically you just hit it I think we spent like three four dollars at the car wash and it's clean it you know you give it a chamois and it looks brand new again or better than brand new I reckon so really happy with that it's definitely a good good upgrade um and just sort of stops some of the scratches not i wouldn't say stops the scratches but it's meant to be a little bit more resistant to some of the lighter scratches so i, I wouldn't be going rubbing you know bushes and all that sort of stuff up the side of the car um but you know for what it is it works well keeps everything clean um now we've got the safari snorkel now this is the armac snorkel so yeah, the, um, the Safari Snorkel has definitely been great. You, um, you hear it in the car, um, just with obviously, you know, it's a, I think it's a four inch intake into the standard air box. So it really sucks in the air and you can sort of hear it howling, you know, when you drive, especially off road in low range, you can hear it howl. But um, so yeah, no, that's been worth every cent that one. Now I think, um, I'll get these prices out again for you. So, um, oh, actually, that snorkel was included in the ARB bull bar side step, so that was all fitted at ARB before we picked the car up. Now, all of that, including the snorkel, was four and a half thousand. So, that was that's the price for all of that stuff. Now, we've got the tyres. We decided to run a three one five seven five on a sixteen inch rim. Now, um, they've been a great tyre. Um, we're running the Nitto Trail Grapplers on the King. D-locker 
uh, steel wheels. Now, being a steel rim, uh, we thought we might have a few dramas in balancing, but they've been really, really good. So I can't complain with all that. Now, the tyres themselves are going really well, uh, wearing really nicely. They've done probably about 20,000 K so far, so they're still going really well. A little bit noisy, but not too bad. Now, I think the so tyres were about 2,300 for all five tyres and the rims were about eight, 825 bucks for all five rims. So not too bad. When you look at some of the rims, you know, the alloy ones, you're sort of looking, you know, they could be even up around the four, 500 bucks per rim. So for the sake of, you know, paying $825 for all five, it's definitely worth it. You scratch one or anything, you know, you can replace them nice and cheap. But being steel, they're nice and strong, so hopefully we don't have to. Now, suspension under the front. Now, we went with this whole, so we just gone a three inch lift all the way around. Now, we go a three inch instead of a two, just because over time, all the lifts sag. So we like to have the vehicle sort of sit at about a two inch lift, and that's sort of, I'm guessing what it's sort of sitting at now. Um, so obviously it was a little bit taller when we first had it done but overall the suspension that's done about 20,000 k's now as well it's going excellent so all adjustable um, so all the shocks at the front um, and we can show inside there quickly all the shocks coils all Dobinson now all adjustable they've been excellent so definitely can't complain with that now all the suspension that was so full lift kit including leafs at the back with the adjustables all installed was about four and a half grand so you look at that compared to some of the coil conversions and some of the other kits you can get you're sort of saving a few dollars there and we're still taking it on all the tough tracks and doing what we want to do with it so the only thing that has let us down with the suspension is obviously with the 500 kilo leaf pack in the back they hang down a little bit further so the only thing we really get stuck or hung up on is the bigger ruts or any rocks they're the only things that sort of stop it. Now, obviously with front and rear lockers, when it gets hung up on the rear with the leafs, the front locker tends to just pull us through that little bit easier. So I can't complain. We've got through everywhere we want to. Um, now we haven't installed a winch. That's gonna be sort of on the, on the list. We've been looking at a few of them, just tossing up our options with winch. Now, under the bonnet here, if we have a quick look, as you can see, we've got gas struts now that's a marks full drive um a, a gas strut kit for the 79 series cruisers now that's been worth every cent now that was a birthday present so i'm not sure on how much that was but easy to install basically a couple of relocation brackets for the accessory fuse box and all you need is a nut cert um, tool for the bonnet and you just got to drill a couple of holes which they're pretty, the instructions are really self-explanatory and easy to follow, so we're really happy with that. Now, we haven't touched anything under the bonnet here yet. Um, we're just gonna save that. Might look at doing a remap and a tune a little bit later on. Now, over there, we'll run through. So when we brought the car while it was brand new, we did full underbody rust proofing and also the electric rust proofing. So the couple of tech in the corner there, Amber zooms in. The what? The cup protector. You can sort of see it up there. So that's the electronic rust proofing. So, um, <laughs> so that's wired to all the panels on the um, on the body of the car, and it's meant to just help you know stop it stop anything rusting in the salt and all that sort of stuff. Now, we still like to keep care, like keep um, good care of the cars. So every now and then, if we go away on the beach or something. I'll come back and spray all the bolts under the bonnet with like inox or WD-40 or something like that just to stop anything corroding or rusting. Now, I think for the, where are we? So rust proofing and the electric spray. So basically the whole entire chassis was rust proofed and the rust proofer that we use, um, so rust free at Brendale, um, he does all the rust proofing old school as well. So he'll actually pull all the door cards off and spray inside the doors as well. So it's just a secondary sort of, you know, barrier against any rust. Now, all up, I think there was about fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500. So it's, you know, looking at that, 
and protecting against rust, it's worth every cent. Now, we've never had the electronic rust proof on any of our other cars. We've heard good and bad reviews about it, but we thought we'd give it a go. So, you know, so far so good. Uh, we've been up the beach, I think, a couple of times. It goes really well. Um, like I said, give it a thorough clean when you come back and usually you're all good. So, yeah, but those bonnet struts have been worth every cent. Now, don't look at the wiring. We've got to tidy that up, so don't look at it. <laughs> That's just a makeshift. <laughs> That's just to get us by. So, our um, auto electrician, which is also our mechanic, um, he could have killed me when he looked under the bonnet. He's like, what have you done? He's like, mate, look shocking. So, we'll take it back to him soon and, you know, we'll get him to rewire it all, make sure it looks, as he calls it, nice and sexy. So, <laughs> that way, you know, it suits the car and, you know, what it should look like. One other thing I forgot to mention. So, we've gone DPF back exhaust. So, it's a four inch um, side exit pipe. So, in-house fab. I've done that one up for us now. I think they sell them um, on their website, which with the DPF, you don't get the best sound out of them. Obviously, it's just like one big muffler. Now, we wanted to get the best sound out of it with keeping the DPF in. So we researched, researched, researched. Now, that seemed to be the best um, you know, value for money and for us to get the best sound out of it that we could. So. I think I got a photo of it when we first installed it, so I'll, I'll show them because they're a little bit nicer. Like Amber can show you now if she can, um, like obviously where it's dumped. So with the bigger tyres on, obviously you know fuel economy sort of goes down a bit. So if you're buying one for fuel economy, I wouldn't. Um, as it is, just with the tray on the back, um, with the bigger tyres, the lift, all of the stuff on it, as it is. We sort of sit around 14 litres per 100 sort of around town and even on a big highway trip, you know, you might get 13, 14, something like that. Now, when we tow the van, so hook the van up and we're sort of running about anywhere from that 18 to, you know, 20 litres per 100. So I was actually quite shocked. It's not as bad as what I thought. Now, these, the newer model cruisers, they've got a taller, I think it's taller second and fifth gear. So on the highway, with the bigger tyres, we sit under 2,000 RPM. So it really makes it nice and comfortable and sort of smooth to drive um, on the highway and all of that. Even around town, people whinge about the power. Personally, it's not that bad. Um, I can't complain about the power and the pickup. Even towing the van, like, yes, it's a little bit sluggish. It's no powerhouse, but they are a big, heavy four wheel drive. So you can't expect miracles out of them. So, you know, factory, Honestly, if it wasn't for us towing the van and trying to gain a little bit more power, we wouldn't tune it. But, you know, yeah, I, I really can't complain. It drives nicely. So There's not much power difference. I spent a lot of money on, you know, the old Patrol to get power out of it. Whereas this here, it's got the grunt of the V8, which, you know, you can't compare power to the torque. So that's what I like about them. Um, they just got that torque where some of the other cars, like we had a Prado um, four-cylinder. Just the three litre 150 model Prado. Now, oh, excellent power. They're, you know, super nippy around town and all that sort of stuff. But I'd hate to be towing a van with it. Like, honestly, the torque and stuff is just not there. It's just, you, you just can't compare the two. So that's where it's sort of, I think people, a lot of them come from those more powerful, you know, new modern cars. And they come and think, oh, I'll buy a cruiser, you know. They, that's what I want and they get disappointed with power and all that sort of stuff but you know for what they are they're simple reliable and you know they go just about anywhere so we love it so we'll jump on the inside and um, we'll see what we've done in there from inside we've gone with the um, Department of the Interior we've got the floor console so the full, full length now we've got the accessory in there, so your 12 volt plug and dual USBs in there. Now, they're not wired up yet because I've been a bit lazy, but um, these here, so we went with Department of the Interior just because we like the finish and all that. Now all of these, they all pull out as well, so you can take them out, give them a clean, put them back in again. And 
which is perfect. So you get sand in there or whatever, just pull it out, give it a clean. Now, these here fit all your Nava switches, so you got all your driving lights, you know, you got heaps of room for more. Now, it's an agri agricultural vehicle, so basically it's made for the farmers and all that sort of stuff. So the good thing is, well, the reason we like it is because a, it's very basic, so if anything does go wrong, you got a lot better chance of fixing it. Now, like with the old patrol that I had, the old GQ, it's very similar. So it takes me like five minutes and you got half the dash out. Whereas all these new cars, you got clips here, bits there. It takes forever, you know? Whereas these are nice and simple and it just works. When you're, you know, when you're away in the middle of nowhere, that's why like we did a trip up northern territory and half the cars when you go remote you'll see land cruisers hiluxes prados it's toyota you know it's they they do sort of dominate the country they were built here for australian conditions and it does show you know simple can sometimes be best now um the roof console we got as well from the department of the interior now this has been excellent, we love it. Um, we were tossing up whether or not we do get it or not. Now it's got two map lights on each side so you can turn both of them on. They're, they're excellent so, you know, that bit of extra light because it's only standard and they come with this center light here. Now, we opted for the dual USB on both sides so that way you can have, say, your phone or iPad or anything charging and you can just tuck it up in here. Now I think between, we got the, uh, let's see. So we got the roof console. So basically as it came, not including the CV, the center console, and we also got the door pods. So the door pods came um, with the speakers. So I think they're an Alpine R speaker. So I think they're a six by nine or something like that. Now all up with the speakers, door pods, center console roof console was 3200 so it's not too bad like you pay well toyota should come out with this stuff from factory really like for what you pay for the car it should come out like this but at the end of the day you know people like us are still buying them so they're not going to change it if they're still you know making money off them so for us, this was sort of an essential upgrade. It just, you know, you've got two cup holders now. Um, you can put all your phones and, you know, gate keys, whatever keys, load it up in here and you're all, all good. Now, looking up here, we've got the um, GME. So we've got the 330 XRS. So that again was, we got that on special from Repco. Now that one was, let's see. $375. Now I think they were on special once again. I think it was about 20% off. They do it every now and then. Now it is worth worth waiting for it because you do save a few dollars. With the CB, because obviously they mount in behind, so we've got the um what do you call it? The main part of the CB, I don't know what you call it, but that's actually mounted up in here. So it's out of the way and then you can pull it out and disconnect it if you want. So, you know, there's nothing hanging from the ceiling. We did change, however, we put the magnetic clip from GME on the back. So it's just a little dome, as you can see here, and the magnetic mount. So super easy, without me looking, I just clip it in. Now, it's super strong. We've been over so many corrugations, bumps, full driving, does not come down. Now, we put one on that side, and also one on this side just in case it's just me in the car and I want to have it you know easily accessible and I can see what's going on so super easy and definitely an upgrade that I'd recommend on on the GME so I, I'd never go back to one of the clip ones again after having these and I recommend them to everyone else so we upgraded I think it's was it the Kenwood system um, DMX 8020s now this one here once again, we got on special, so we try and save money where we can and then use it on other things. So this one here, I think it cost about $800 for the unit. I'm pretty sure it was. Now, uh, this unit fit in beautifully. Um, what, we, what we like about it is that it's got volume buttons. So when you're bouncing around 
on corrugations and that there's nothing worse than hitting a touch screen to try and turn the volume down and you hit something else so the buttons are so much easier the kenwood system is really good unit now it goes really well with the alpine speakers um really happy with you know the sound it puts out really really happy with it and price wise like i said on special um auto barn that one was really good they help me out um all the adapters for it so basically it was meant to be a plug and play kit now i got our auto electrician to fit it and he's done an excellent job so he's wired it up with the reverse camera and you can see everything on here so really really good you can have I think it's about three or four phones connected to Bluetooth so you can swap between each one so me and Amber will have both phones connected and we can pick which one we want which is which is great um, so with the cruisers obviously they come the gxl comes factory with front and rear diff lock so you can see this one here so you push it once and you got your rear push it twice and you've got front and rear activated so it's really handy it hasn't missed a beat with us so far um honestly it's been a great little you know great to have and i, I never thought you'd use lockers much but in this thing where it hasn't got the most wheel travel you do use them because that's what gets you through because you're picking up wheels here there and everywhere so it's really really helpful now obviously carpet inside gxl everything standard now over this side i'll grab the camera for a sec over this side so we've got our there are our mirrors so obviously we can adjust either the right mirror or the left mirror now it's just to move it which really handy now have to lean through the car to, to do anything and obviously our red arc red arc tow pro so that thing's been great it really really works well and obviously with the van on it works really well so it's definitely a must if you're towing any loads or you know towing trailers it's definitely a must now the seats standard seats i've seen a lot of people complain about how uncomfy they are personally I don't think people have had an old 96 model GQ Patrol before because <laughs> these are more comfortable than that. Now, first week, oh, first couple of weeks we had it. We did, I think we did a thousand k's in the car before we left, and then we went straight up, drove from Brisbane to Cairns in two days, and then spent a week up there, and then obviously drove back again. Now, we did the full trip up to Cairns. I think it's about 1600 k's, no dramas at all. Like, I didn't have any pain. I mean. I'm not probably old enough to be whinging about back pain, but <laughs> personally, they're fine for you know what we do and all of that. So I wouldn't be upgrading them just yet. I think it'll be maybe a couple of years down the track before we do anything with the seats because they've been really good. Um, but yeah, just a set of seat covers. We will look at some better ones later on. We just got some cheap ones from Super Cheap, the RM Williams for now. They just keep the seats clean. We'll look at probably I think the razor back seat covers they look really good i think my brother's got a set and so i'll probably get a full set for in here which i think it'll be worth it so yeah so we've got this useless pocket over here one of my mates reckons it's perfect because it fits a pack of smokes and a lighter in it so <laughs> he reckons that's what it's for but i i've been looking and you can get now a basically it's a replacement panel for there and it's a pull out cup holder so that's definitely on the list of um you know things to get in the back here obviously the console the uh, department of the interior consoles um we opted for the wedge at the back which just got some plastic cup holders in here for the back seat so anyone sitting in the back has got you know something to put their drink in now i fitted the consoles myself now just back to the consoles again um super easy to fit now the installation you know the instructions they give you they spot on and i think i had them in within like all the old stuff out which is not much one cup holder <laughs> and like a piddly little box in the middle and i think that took me like five minutes to take out this one here probably took me like oh, 10 minutes to put in that's about it and like everything lines up factory holes everything they've done an awesome job and just finishes nicely with the roof so if you're after something i think it's a bit of a wait for it but i'd definitely be looking into them now above your head there i've just for now this is just um a hat holder for the Acubra, so just keeps it up off the seats and and all of that so it just tucks it away up there put another one on this side for amber's hat later on but 
we've got to get around to doing that. So now in behind here, in behind here, we've got a um, well, I made up a backboard for the cruiser. Now we've went with just a kicker 10 inch sub once again that was on special i think it was about 400 bucks from autobahn basically came with the sub the box and the amp so really happy with how it is it goes really really well now auto electrician had to wire it up um he reckons that some of the stuff he used most of, like some of it he didn't he had to rewire it about two or three times to get the best sound out of it now the sound that does come out of it is really, really good. We've had lots of compliments about it. It goes really hard for a 10 inch sub. The only thing is it does rub, as you can see, I don't know if you can see here a bit, it does rub on the back of the seat. So that's the only thing, it's a very tight fit. But if you're wondering, the original box with the kicker sub does fit just. Um, we do have plans for in this section here, so where Amber is, um, got plans to put a slimline um, lithium battery setup now we haven't done anything with it because we've got the van we don't really need it at this stage um, I just got a basic a battery box that runs off the back and it runs the fridge for a couple of days no problems at all so that's basically what we're doing at the moment which is all we really need now the question I've been asked a lot, especially on Facebook and all that sort of stuff, is the child restraint. So from factory, the dual cab land cruisers don't come out with any factory child restraints in the back. So from from new at Toyota, they installed these. So everyone's asking where we got them from because they're such a nice little, you know, little system. They're nice and tidy. They're, yeah, oh, I can't complain. They look really good compared to some of the other ones on the market. Now. Skyfleet Toyota at Kedron. I've contacted them and said, you know, who fitted them for us? And they actually fitted them in house. So they fit them and mod played them in house at um, Skyfleet Toyota at Kedron. So if you're after some, give them a call and um, they should be able to help you out. Uh, they've been awesome to deal with. So that's who we brought the car from. So yeah, that's about all we've got in behind the seat here. That was a big question, was these ones. So we covered that one now and yeah the backboard so don't pay attention to all the dust yeah it's pretty dusty <laughs> we haven't given it a clean for a while so but yeah everything else back seats just cheap set of seat covers in here now as you'll see i'll put this down um you like my floor mat a bit of marine carpet i've just cut to the shape of the floor just for now <laughs> until we can get some good ones i think the 3d mats um looking into them because they seem to be really good, catch all the all the mud and sand and all that sort of stuff. But like I said, for now, a bit of carpet sort of just catches all the sand, all the dirt. And yeah, you just pull it out, give it a shake, vacuum, and you're all sweet. Now, if you're looking at buying one and you think they're going to be comfort and, you know, I don't know, you think they're going to stack up to a 200 series, like straight out of the box, no way at all. Um, we've done obviously a few things to make it a bit more comfortable and work for what we need it for. So as you can see, we sort of haven't spent an awful lot on accessories and all that sort of stuff because that's basically the bare basics that we need to get, you know, our ultimate tourer. Um, obviously, you know, we have got a few future plans for the cruiser. So obviously we've got winch we want to put in. Um, roof rack, just a flat rack, probably the Rhino one with the backbone um, system, they look quite nice. Uh, like I mentioned before, possibly just a half canopy, something like that. But that'll be all sort of later on down the track. And obviously a tune, um, yeah, just probably a tune. Throttle controller, I've heard, helps really well. So they're all sort of stuff on the, on the list. And obviously with tune, we'll have to upgrade the clutch because these standard clutches are pretty shit like so far they've been really good like standard clutch we've got you know the 315s on there we tow the van and the standard clutch has been excellent the stunt it's done everything we want it to um it hasn't slipped been on the beach done everything like that so i can't complain about you know i don't, I don't know how long we'll get out of it but for now 20,000 k's on it it's gone really well so we will look at upgrading it with the tune obviously for what they are they're simple reliable and 
you know, they go just about anywhere. So we love it. Yeah, so that brings us to the end. Um, obviously, like I said, we chose it because it was our ultimate car, ultimate four wheel drive that we wanted to, to do up. Now, like we said, we didn't want to spend mega dollars, so we've done a lot of stuff on a budget where we can. Now, there's a few more things that we'll, you know, spend properly on, and that's probably the dual battery system, redoing all the electrics, like the wiring that I have done dodgily to get it working for now. Um, but other than that, that's sort of sitting, you know, as our ultimate car. Yeah, if you've got any questions about the build or the car or anything in general, um, where we had stuff done, you know, what we brought, where we brought it, just drop a comment down below and, you know, I'll try and get back to you with, with all of that. So, yeah, thanks for watching. She's giving me the finger. But, um, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> She's having a nap. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to put all this shit together. <laughs>